Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 162 of my Modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we're going to work on some blue science. We've already got it all figured out in Hellmod, so we just need to build it. What seems like the biggest component of this is the blue science packs themselves, in part because of all of these productivity modules. But that's important to reduce the amount of resources that go into this. And since we're building new setups now, we can make them as big as we want in order to get maximum productivity. Now, what kind of orientation should we do? Because I don't know if it's going to be flippable or not. Well, there's some resources above. So let's go down here. So these machines are quite slow. Very few of each resource goes in. So we can probably pack a bunch of these like this. And should we do 10 or 20? Let's do 10 for now and see what it looks like. So that's the science. And we can have outputs on each side, which will combine with other setups. Something like this. So what is this going to look like? We'll have to use some landfill, but we might want to pack this down since this is going to be a fairly large setup. We might want to double it up. And there we go. So let's plop a few more in here. Whoops, I made that twice as big as it needed to be. So it's not quite so extreme. Wondering why I was running out of resources, because I had it all kinned out ahead of time. There will be the output. And of course, lots of productivity modules. Boom. So we have an input of sodium hydroxide and other components. We'll have to be a little bit of stitching to get all this worked in here. I kind of want to remind myself that sodium hydroxide needs to go in there, so I'm just going to leave that belt there and hopefully I remember. But these other things get manufactured nearby. The light source is fairly straightforward. The sensors array is fairly straightforward. It's the laser array that has lots of components. So let's do the light source and the atomic sensors array on one side and then the laser on the other. And of these, the bigger is the sulfur light source. So let's start with that. Kind of wish that this uh, pinned window would tell you how many inserters you needed. I know there's not much space, but it would be such a useful window if it said that. But since it doesn't, I'll have to come in here. So we have 3.09 chemical plants, so basically four. And uh, let's put them in a row here. It looks like they don't have to be spaced out like that, but let's see how it works. So the sulfur will come from somewhere. Then the microcircuits and reaction nodes come from one direction. So on the other, let's do the input of glass and the output of the light sources. Glass will be coming from a train. So it'll come down and the output will be down as well. But we need to make sure there's room for the inserters here with speed modules in there. Let's see, these aren't made by very many machines. Looks like we need one machine for each tier, chopping up the coils. So that would handle copper, which would direct insert into this machine, making the microwafers. 
the same thing for the next component, which needs lead. Set that to lead. Next one, iron. And it looks like actually that one can't be done. An electronics assembler, it has to be in a regular one. See, we might be able to make this slightly more appealing. Move that over there. So input, input, input. Output, output, output into these. And then finally, stack inserter right here, which will go down. But because they need to combine belts with something else, see those got to go in there. Let's pick this up. Oh, it can't be flipped. <sighs> it gets real annoying. So one half of what we need can come down there, and then we can do the other bit on the other side. But we've got some modules to throw in there. We've got efficiency, 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 and then I assume productivity for all of those. And then the other side of this, we'll put them down here for now two assembling machines, making the nodes. It looks like they need an input of basically two assembling machines. And one machine making the cables. So that can probably be direct inserted into there. Input from somewhere. It's a little weird, but let's put these on the top and the bottom. The input goes in there. Then stack inserters go out. And we have our output of two red inserters. So let's see what we can do with this. Well, that's nice and square. And square is good. Let's see, that is one belt of the outputs. And actually, I guess we could just put glass on this side. Make this a little simpler. Let's see. Well, how many of these are going to have four in total? Let's just put it in here now. We can do something like this and then have this belt come from over here. And then hopefully this will line up pretty much. It's not perfectly square, but kind of not possible for it to be that way. If so, it would have to swing up and then go down again, which would be kind of annoying. We'll see how the rest of it looks. Make any necessary changes. So glass comes in from above. And we have our output going down. And that is one of the components going into that. That will need to combine belts with something else, which we decided would be the atomic sensors array. Probably don't want to mash them in too tight because it looks like it might be inserter limited. Plus we do have a bunch of items coming in here. Especially copper. But we could do some direct insertion to try to avoid belt logistics problems. Let's see how that looks. Where we would have One machine there, making the sensors array, and the two flanking it would be direct insertion for the copper for that one machine. I probably want to put this here. The copper would like come down the middle or something. We would need six machines, but considering how tall that is, it probably won't be a problem to just stack a bunch of them. So of the other inputs. We have aluminum, which will come straight in on a belt, and silver and circuits, which will be straight in on a belt. But here's kind of some problems of this, is that we have to make sure everything fits. But I think that it might, because we have aluminum, which one inserter is fine for. 
And these other two, which one inserter should be fine for? Long-handed. And because we don't have extra lung inserters yet, we need that underground. But that can be the output of everything we have so far, and we'll sort it later. And I think that takes care of it. Ah, oh, but that pipe can't go there. Because we need to insert them. But that's okay. You could probably, like, go in there. So where to put this? Well, let's try to line it up with these other machines. And put a space there to separate them. So we need a total of six of these. And that pipe will have to connect to something. I'll just stick it down there to remind me that it does. So this output will go down, and we will have some coppery byproduct to send out. The system was already put in place. It's just a couple of belts. So we'll need to insert that. And annoyingly, the best place to do it might be right here. So I kind of want to move stuff a little bit to make it fit. But on the last spot here, we can send the sensors arrays down, and the byproduct will go the other way. I wonder if there's a cleaner way to do this. I don't know if this is necessarily cleaner, but we might not have to move the machines if we do it this way. And these can go this way. Because of that, I guess we can make it look symmetrical here. They can combine and keep going down. And looks like this gas needs to be hooked up with something, so I'll just do a line of pipes there too. So this whole thing can be picked up. Moved over here, give it a space. Okay. We just had some modules, speeds, and then productivities. And this output comes down, and it needs to combine. Let's do so right here. And that's half of the input resources. Now we need that laser array with all of its requirements. Sodium hydroxide will have to come in from somewhere. Looks like the closest place would be north. So it would have an input coming down and then would be combined with wherever the uh, other items are made. I'll just uh, leave that disconnected to remind me how this is set up, but it would go right in there to get the other resources. And it looks like we're running out of space, so we won't be able to line this up completely. But we can do that uh, when we get there. Looks like there's no modules on these laser arrays. So we certainly want to throw some in there. That helps a little. So it has some random input requirements. All of these are kind of messy. And the numbers are kind of small, so probably no direct insertion here. Let's see, let's do the simpler of the two on the right. And that's two plants. 
making the fuel. And actually, if it's just two plants, we can try to line them up here. Assuming the pipes will let us, though. I think they will. Because the steel can come in there. With long-hand inserters, so we need to put them like that. Then the output of fuel, which we can just throw in the middle. Because there's going to be more of these machines. So the inputs will be there. And the outputs will be right there. Okay. It's kind of getting somewhere. Let's put the rest of these in here. Let's see, we might be able to do this. And some errant pipes to remind me that stuff connects. And we'll worry about the chemicals last since pipes are easy enough to just place wherever we need them. It's like the emitter and the foci are basic machines, require a ton of copper and some other stuff. Looks like it's more or less one-to-one. -one. These can be one-to-one. -one. But on these ones, the machines are a little too slow. So for the cleanliness of the setup, let's just change that setup a little bit. Yeah, it won't save quite as much copper. But these have fairly high copper requirements. So any direct insertion we can do will make this simpler. Probably doesn't matter which one we do. But I'm thinking they will output in the middle here. And actually, both setups are very similar in size and shape. Just one has one more resource requirement. So maybe we can copy this over. We shall see. The copper will come in down there. And then this has two other inputs, which actually, if we do this, we can have the input actually come down here. Red for every machine might be pushing it so let's just do stack inserters. So this will be a mixed belt, but on the left side will be both the coppery byproduct and the foci. So I'm hoping I can sort them out nice and cleanly. We shall see. And we need a total of six of them. And since the setup is fairly similar, let's see if we can make it work like this. Not sure. Well, let's see. Basically, it has one more input, which is a little troublesome. But we can actually still make it work, I think. So let's put that in there. So we change the output to be the emitters. Which will output both the byproduct and the emitter on the other side of this belt, so we will have a belt with four items on it. And then that'll get an input of, let's say, aluminum and glass, but based on the numbers, it looks like it needs to be red. And does that other side need to be red? Oof. It does because it needs 20 glass. Well, we might have to do something similar for both sides. Well, in that case, we'll cut this, have the input of silver come down here, and we'll plop that in there, do long-handed, and regulars to grab that silver. So I'm hoping we can do something similar on this side here, where we can do electronic boards and aluminum on this side, and then the glass would come in through there. Copper comes from there. And glass from there. 
So is that all the inputs? Copper, yes. Glass, yes. The aluminum, yes. How very symmetrical. Okay, that's good enough. To plop back in place. And it will go on this belt right here. So let's put a space in there. Which will have a mixed belt output with a whole bunch of items on it. So here's the part where I hope that it stays sorted. Where we do this and say output on the right is copper waste byproduct, which is on both the left and the right side of the belt. And then what's left will be the foci and the emitters, which will hopefully stay on their side of the belt and it'll be nice and sorted and go in there. And then it will have an output that uh, meshes with this right here. So that will be these laser arrays, which will combine with the sodium hydroxide and then go in here to hopefully give us all the things. Assuming I haven't uh, forgotten anything. It's kind of a lot going on here, so that's very possible. But for now, looking pretty good. We need some lights in there, and I think we need modules on this side. Speeds right here. And we have to be a little careful because these two sides do it a little differently. The foci get productivity. And the emitters get a productivity and an efficiency. I believe that takes care of all of the solid products. So now we need to do the chemicals. We will have the input of sodium hydroxide on a drone, sulfur on a drone, and fuel oil on a drone. So we have to remember to leave room for that, but that won't be too big a deal. Well, we can make this block anywhere. It's probably not going to be that big, but I'm thinking we will harvest the oil from here, so maybe we can put all these machines kind of in this little section. So it looks like two air filters into one plant here, and I suppose I can use the pin this time since there are no inserters. But we need two air filters with efficiency modules, and then one and one right there. The oxygen needs to be split off for making the sulfur dioxide gas, but then this other output can just go up there and get combined with whatever it needs. So we'll leave that there. And then we need to follow the oxygen here. And it only has one place to go besides a drone. And that's in this chemical plant here. So actually, let's see how it can fit all this. Looks like this fits fairly well. Not sure how these things will line up, but let's just do that. Actually, why not make it perfectly straight? Because we can. And that sulfur will come in from somewhere. It's probably going to do something annoying and come straight down across the whole series of belts on the bus. Because the road's up here, so it's probably just going to go meow to wherever we need it, and then maybe, you know, <laughs> just depends on where this stuff ends up being. But for now, I'll leave a space here, and it would basically, like, go in here. We'll figure out the best spot later, but we'll have the input, and then the gas is an output going to where it needs to go, which on this machine is the sulfur light sources, which is right here. So it would have to swing over. From a pipe standpoint, it'll probably require less pipes if this setup is as far to the right as we can get it. And we'll have a series of pipes kind of going through here. Probably don't need to make that so dense. 
but it would be something like that. But it kind of looks like there's space here to do this. And actually, we do have that one little space right here for a belt. So I wonder if maybe we can make use of it. By doing something like this. But we'd have our output of nitrogen. The other nitrogen can connect there. Because we're going to need to save some of that oxygen. So let's just put something like this. And some pipes to remind me that it's not connected to anything. So that can go up here. That's the sulfur dioxide gas. Nitrogen gas goes down. Might as well make it run for as long as we can. And we won't know the position of the nitrogen until this is placed, so we'll just leave the pipe right there. And we'll hook up the leftover oxygen, although now that I think about it, we probably want to have an overflow valve on here. Since the flow is low, the overflow valve should work fine. As the tank should as well. Right, let's put it there. And put those pipes in there. Oh, but we do need the actual overflow valve though. Whatever, I'll just let that run. Doesn't really hurt anything. So the oil products now. It's actually pretty simple. Lots of pump checks. It's hard to say exactly how many pump checks we'll need. We'll just fill all the nodes that are available and put productivity modules on there and see how it works. We'll speed them up if we need to. But it looks like it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. Well, in that case, we might be able to make it fit nice and cleanly. And let's pin it because we don't have any inserters. So the multi-phase oil would come in here, making raw gas, crude oil, sulfuric wastewater. Two of those need to go to drones. So they would swing around basically, or go wherever they need to. I'm assuming they're gonna have to swing around. Let's put those pipes in there and efficiencies. And then that goes into refinery. And oh yeah, we actually needed two of them. Because we needed one for the normal way, and then one for the condensates. Well, let's throw the normal way in here first. Well, we might want to put both of them because the positioning might change here. Fortunately, you need glass to make refineries. So refineries are definitely the kind of thing where you might want to put them on a bus because you never really carry glass in your inventory. It's kind of an annoying item to have to have. But since we have to handcraft it, we're going out there to get glass. Luckily though, silicon completely caught up. So we have all the glass we can possibly need. So let's plop the second refinery in there, making the condensates. And we'll need to line everything up and Unfortunately, because of the position of the pipes, it doesn't really line up very well this way. And I think I would rather have the pipes be straight than the machines be straight. Like this. That makes it almost straight. So the condensates will come from drones. Probably want to have tanks and whatnot in here and a pump to keep it topped off as best it can. That will continue to go to wherever the drones are. And that'll just run as it can. We got some modules in here. I'll just fill both of them with the same types of modules. Even though the condensates one is just for byproducts. So the main thing that these are running for is to make naphtha because we will always have some amount of fuel oil that will need to be an input. So we don't need logic set based on fuel oil. 
and there will always be a little bit of mineral oil as an output. So we don't need logic there. So this will probably have to go to the side. However, the naphtha is the control. And we always want to use up any condensates, so we'll leave that permanently connected. The one that we want to control is the normal method. So we can put a pump there and some type of tank to control all of this. Let's use that. We do need to have some numbers here to show the quantity in each of these tanks. And oh yes, there is some oil residuals byproduct, which needs to get in there as well. I'm not sure where to put it. So I just kind of want to put a belt here for now. And let's see where this can go. It can technically probably fit in one of these squares. But the question is, do we want it to? We may not. Just because of the position of all these pipes. So because of that, we might want to try to just line this up with the other pipes. So we have our many inputs and outputs going to the right there. And all those pipes will have to be hooked up. But ultimately what we needed was the naphtha and fuel oil to make it down here. So we require some additional logic with the fuel oil because we're not producing enough fuel oil here. But we don't want the drones to just fill it up to the very top because then the whole system would clog. So let's put a tank in there and control the filling of this tank based on its fill level. And we also need to set that one as well. And we need some outputs. Let's just throw a pump in there. And actually, an old corners tank might work a little better here just to keep the pipe straight. So then we can just kind of follow along here. And we probably also want to pump on this one just to keep it pressurized. Just to make sure our logic works and it doesn't cause any problems with the machines. That one will just always be on. And actually that pump is on the wrong side needs to be this one right here. Let's say fuel oil is less than 10,000. Hmm. I realize I put the small Nixie tubes there. We kind of want the big ones because we want it to be similar to these setups right here. Okay. So the output will come up here. That's the naphtha. So naphtha and fuel oil, along with nitrogen, are going up there. And that is the fluids necessary for this side. Let's make sure these pumps have logic. Naphtha does not. So we'll set that to the same thing, where it keeps it from getting completely empty. And this pump pressurizes the system. Let's double check all the resources. Oil goes in there. Condensates go up there. Output of sulfuric wastewater, output of raw gas, then it goes to the refineries. Nap that goes in here and gets sent out, and it has logic controlling it. The fuel oil goes up here into this tank, and it has logic controlling it as well. It gets extra from drones and sends it out. The mineral oil goes out to a drone, and then there is the nitrogen gas which goes out there. Well, I think that's everything. The machines all seem to have modules. It's mostly connected. It's just uh, this part needs to be put up here, but because of this, we can't. But we can pick it up. And pick this one up as well this whole thing. 
And I think we're good. The only other machines we need are the pump jacks. And I've got some of those. I don't think this is enough machines to require the crawler. So I'll just use nanobots for it. But we'll want to make sure to bring a bunch of belts, because you always need a bunch of them. It's probably nowhere near enough. But that's what the car is for. Driving fast. So let's go build it. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. But we'll find out quite quickly if I have. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to build this blue science setup. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.